My memories, and, and, and I had only a couple of encounters, but it is exactly as you describe, although it was just casual encounters, and it was a young, anonymous young guy interested in music talking, talking with them was this entire sort of generous focus, mm -hmm. and it didn't matter who you were. He wanted to talk about music with them, and that's all that mattered. And he had a kind of Buddha-like presence, and there was a, a glee and a, a, a serenity both at the same, same mm -hmm. time about him. Describe um, the house in Aptos, because I, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the whole scene there and what went on there, because mm -hmm. I think that was sort of home and central to it was being. so central to such a large group of artists i mean he he was kind of you know the queen bee of a hive you know and <laughs> he really gathered gathered artists around him and loved that and i think um you know speaking of henry cowell i think that he and cage both learned from cowell that don't depend on the establishment to give you an opportunity don't depend on a symphony orchestra to commission you um, and just get a group of friends together and do your work. So I think that that was a philosophy that served Lou throughout his whole life. And I think it's one of the reasons that the Gamelan Orchestra was, you know, there were several reasons it was a great fit for Lou, the Indonesian Gamelan, Javanese Gamelan in particular. That was because you could just gather together all these people and surround yourself with like-minded people. And the other, other half of it was that those were beautifully tuned instruments that were all made by one, one instrument maker. And so you could have this great group of friends playing a tuned uh, you know, percussion ensemble and what could be better for loop.